huge crowd on hand to watch Big Brown's effort here today, the largest we've seen since Smarty Jones tried and failed to win the Triple Crown. You know, Japanese import casino drive was scratched earlier today, so Big Brown's effort just became a little easier because after cantering three furlongs, he came back to the barn favoring that left rear foot. Now, many felt Casino Drive was the only stumbling block that Big Brown faced today. In fact, the New York Times turf writer picked him to beat Big Brown, but that will not be happening. Meanwhile, our favorite has been very frisky back there, and trainer Bob Baffert telling us earlier today that horse is wired and ready for a huge, huge effort. This is the hottest June 7th in Elmont, New York history. It has soared past 90 degrees here for the fans. Into the mid-90s we go, slight breeze blowing out of the southwest, but the track all day has been fast, and unless we have a sudden thunderstorm, we do not expect that to change. And as you can expect with Casino Drive Out, the money has been pounding in on big ground. He has been bet down to one to four. Dennis of Cork, who was 12 to 1 on the morning line is now 6 to 1, so he's lost a lot of his value. Keep an eye on Tail of Akati if you're looking for value. Fourth place in the Derby at 14 to 1. So many stories, and to take you along, let's go upstairs now to Joe Tessitore. Take it away, Joe. Thank you, Brent. It has been a fascinating journey with Big Brown this year. We have seen this horse. He wasn't even on the Derby radar this winter, and here he is potentially going to become an unbeaten legend. We all have enjoyed it but two have enjoyed it more probably than any others, and they are both children. Jacob DeSormo, the son of jockey Kent DeSormo, has an incurable genetic disease. It has taken his hearing, and now it threatens his eyesight. And for trainer Rick Dutrow's 13-year-old daughter, Molly, Big Brown has made many dreams come true after a childhood that included horror. She was just 15 months old when her mother was murdered. I'm now joined by my colleagues, Randy Moss, and the man who won two of these Belmont Stakes, Mr. Jerry Bailey and Jacob and Molly. They have showed us how you deal with challenges in life, and now it's their favorite horse who has to deal with the ultimate challenge. Randy, they say it's the toughest thing to achieve in all of American sports, the Triple Crown. Well, for Big Brown fans, here's some advice. Don't look at the history books of the last 20 horses that came here with a chance to sweep the Triple Crown. 17 lost the Belmont Stakes. All 17 were favorites. Most were heavily favored. And just in the last 30 years alone, that list of frustration includes Hall of Famers, Spectacular Bid, Ali Sheba, Sunday Silence, Silver Charm, future Hall of Famer, Smarty Jones. We're beating this to death, I know, but it's important. Vic Brown is the huge favor today, but for him to deliver, he'll have to overcome some sobering statistics. Yeah, harsh slap of reality for those who have attempted it before. What is it about the Belmont, Jerry? Why the Belmont being so difficult? Well, one of the reasons, Joe, is it's three races in the span of five weeks, a schedule trainers wouldn't even consider if it weren't for the Triple Crown, and also the mile and a half. American horses are not bred to go a mile and a half on the dirt, simply because there's not that many opportunities. And because of that, the jockeys don't get that much practice riding it. Ivar Koa and Kent DeSormo are the only two jockeys in this field to ride at this distance. As the Ali camp would say, the champ is here. Big Brown has taken to the track. Just about ready for the post parade, a racing tradition that dates back to 1880. In fact, it was the 14th Belmont Stakes that year, which first put forth the idea of a post parade. Now Belmont number 140 has its post parade led off by a horse trying to also chisel himself into the horse racing history books. Sonia, Joshua, and Jacob the moment they've been waiting for. And Big Brown wears that number one and everything comes full circle. The same number he wore for his career debut at Saratoga. And based on what Big Brown has done so far, obviously he's the Kobe Bryant of this field, but before he can be considered an all-time great, he'll have to seal the deal in about 15 minutes. As usual, he looks great. The surprise starter in the bunch is number two, Guadalcanal, a maiden. Horse language for a horse yet to win a race. In his last start, he lost by a nose at a mile and a half at Churchill Downs. That's why he's here. A maiden ran third in the Belmont, though, as recently as 2005. We showed you Macho again earlier. Very good-looking gray, and Garrett Gomez gets the mount. 
The West Point Thoroughbred Partnership includes 16 owners. All but one are here today to watch him. He was second to Big Brown at 39 to 1 in the Preakness. His trainer, Dallas Stewart, was an assistant to Wayne Lucas for two of Lucas's Belmont Stakes winners. Number four, Dennis of Cork, named for an Irish Catholic priest. And trainer David Carroll said, we're either going to make history or we're going to witness it. And there's Robbie Alvarado. The Irishman Carroll said Dennis of Cork's third in the Derby knocked him out for a spell, but that he's bounced back strongly and he's ready for a big race. The first of Nick Zito's two horses, number six, Tatara. And this Colt has already faced Big Brown this year. 23 and a half lengths behind him in the Florida Derby. This time, Zito has been quoted as saying Tatara is going to the early lead with the 21-year-old Garcia, who's riding in the Belmont for the very first time, owned by Bob LaPenta. Hot horse here. People like him. Number seven, Tail the Cotty. Named for his sire, Tail of the Cat, and Canada's Ikati Diamond Mine, discovered by his owner, the legendary diamond prospector, Chuck Fipke. Fourth in the Kentucky Derby, Avar Koa. And Zito, Zito also has a knock call, and that translates in Indonesian as a troublesome, mischievous child. So parents at home, if you pick by names, surely here's an option. And an omen, the knock call sire, Victory Gallop, the horse that defeated Real Quiet by a nose here in 98, and perhaps the most dramatic Belmont Stakes finish ever. And remember last year, jockey Johnny Velasquez on Rags to Riches, now the mount on Reddy's Echo. This horse is less experienced than Big Brown. Just four starts, and here's something to watch. Reddy's Echo gets away from the gate slowly, drops far behind, but he has a powerful stretch kick. And rounding out the field of nine with a scratch at Casino Drive is Ichabod Train. It is Ichabod Train, by the way. That's how they spell it. Jockey Jeremy Rose won the Belmont in 05 on a fleet. Alex rides in the silks of owner Earl Mack, the former U.S. ambassador to Finland. And the Preakness Ichabod Crane rallied from last to finish third to Big Brown. So from a century-plus-old tradition here, the Post Parade, a more modern addition to this, the oldest of the Triple Crown races, track announcer Tom Durkin will set the stage for a Big Apple Classic. To win the Triple Crown. Keep in mind, the most important furlong at the Belmont is always the final furlong. Can he get the distance? That remains the last question. Not only are hopes of millions riding with him, but also millions of dollars have been bet here today on Big Brown. The last time we checked, 5.89 million. He'd been bet down to one to four today. In case you're just joining us, Casino Drive was scratched early this morning. So we have a nine horse field now. And the hopes of all those who want a Triple Crown winner will ride with the number one horse, Big Brown, who certainly must clear Guadalcanal coming out of that starting gate. Guadalcanal is a non-winner. And upstairs we go to Joe. Thanks, Brent. So many obstacles to overcome regardless of the field size. Just this moment alone. How about Big Brown versus himself? The quarter crack, the challenge of a mile and a half. And Kent DeSormo calmly on board. Let's check in with our reporter on horseback, Caton Bradar. Caton, how does he look to you? Joe, what's amazing is you can hardly hear yourself talk with the crowd, but the jockeys seem to be in the zone, particularly Kent DeSormo. And as far as the... Uh, Big Brown, he seems unfazed by the crowd. He actually seems the coolest of all the horses on the track right now, not reacting at all to the heat, not reacting to the sounds or the excitement. And Ken is so relaxed. Just a minute ago, he asked a couple of the outriders how many minutes to post. He took the horse away from the others, kind of kept him quiet and relaxed. But Ken seems almost equally relaxed, believe it or not. Jerry Bailey, that has to be a good sign. I'm sure Kent is tremendously pleased. Uh, hardly even any lather on Big Brown. As relaxed as you could hope for. Uh, that's one question mark in a jockey's mind. How will he respond in the post trade and the heat to all this stuff? <laughs> the answer's wonderfully. It's already been a good day here for IEAH and for Rick Dutrow, their best sprinter, Benny the Bull, won the True North handicap earlier on the card, so they already have one big win. It just seems like the stars are lining up, and we're about to see if that luck continues. There's Tail Vacati, ridden by Ibar Koa. Uh, I think this will be one of the pace horses. Datara will be one, number six, but I also think Ibar Koa, he's, he's, he's kind of a speed type rider. He likes to be aggressive. The horse worked in 59 for 5H, which is pretty fast. I think he'll go on out and close to the lead. And there's Barkley Tag, of course, best known as the trainer of Funny Side, who couldn't get the Triple Crown sweep done in 2003. There's something handicappers call a perfect trip. 
the quintessential perfect trip is when a horse is sitting in third place behind two dueling horses. If Tail of Akati goes and if Tatara goes, that could be the trip that Big Brown finds himself in. in it's, the called, it's called sitting in the catbird yeah. seat, and, which is where DeSormo wants to be. He's grabbing the reins, and when this Triple Crown quest started, Big Brown was the last to load at the Derby. Remember that? Now here he is, the first to go in at the Belmont and get a little help. And you know, greatness, it doesn't come upon us often. Perfection even more rare. Yet here we are, one moment in time, one chance for that ultimate prize. One beautiful and brilliant unbeaten athlete, and he stands at the crossroads of history and excellence. And for the call, here's Tom Durkin. As the final horses make their way into the starting gate, Big Brown stands composed in post position number one, ready for his date with Triple Crown Destiny, whatever it may hold for him. Anat Nakal moves into post position number eight. Ready Zeko moves into post position outside him, and the final of them all will be Ichabod Crane. All standing beautifully in the starting gate, ready for the 140th Belmont Stakes. And they're off in a 30-year quest for the Triple Crown, and Dottera wasting no time. Is racing to the front, and Kent DeSormo is going to keep Big Brown not far behind as they move into the clubhouse turn. Tail of Akati has some early speed today. He's right up on the lead, now running in third position. Anak Natal is surprisingly close. He's now fourth. And uh, Kent DeSormo now trying to guide his horse off the rail and out of harm's way. He's third, just a bit off the rail now. And it's two lengths back, and Aknakal runs along in fourth position. He's taken to an inviting opening on the inside. A break of five lengths back to Macho again, who now runs in fifth. Dennis of Cork is sixth, about ten lengths from the lead, followed by the maiden Guadalcanal. Ready Zeko lingering at the back of the pack early on. Ichabod train trails the field as they make their way around that vast clubhouse turn here at Belmont Park. It's Dot Terra leading. Taylor Bacocchi is second. And on the outside, Big Brown. Big Brown is third after an opening half mile in a sensible 48 and one fifth seconds. So Kent DeSormo waits. He waits with Big Brown on the outside third. A knock the call just in behind him. And then it's a big chasm about eight lengths back to Dennis of Cork, who runs along a distant fifth. They're midway down the back stretch run. The leader is still Dottara. Tail of a talking right there second. DeSormo waits. DeSormo waits in third with Big Brown on the outside. Three quarters in one twelve and four fifths seconds. Five furlongs to go in the 140th Belmont. Anak Nikal remains in fourth position. A break of five lengths. Macho again moves into fifth. Ichabod Crane is launching a bit from sixth. Around the far turn, a half mile to go in the Belmont. The leader is still Datara. Datara is opening up on the field now. He's opened up a three lane. Caleb Akati is second. Big Brown is third. Kent DeSormo is asking him, but he's still third. Three for him to go. And in the meantime, it's Datara who's opening up, and Big Brown is plummeting as the field turns for home in the Belmont Stakes. The car has opened up a five-length lead, and Big Brown has been eased at the top of the stretch. They're coming into the final furlong. The car is the leader by five lengths here. Dennis, of course, trying to reel him in with one furlong to go, and the car ducks out. Now he ducks in, desperate for the final 16th of a mile, but he's going to do it here. Here's a shocking wire-to-wire -wire win in the Belmont Stakes at 38-1. to It is the car. He wins by four lengths. The Triple Crown will remain taken once again. Dennis of Court finishing second is close to third. And very unfortunate. A desultory Big Brown has the in the space. We will get to Tatara's huge monumental upset. But first, let's focus in on Big Brown. Eased up right near us here, Jerry. At about the eighth pole from in. Did you see anything? No, he did get bounced around a little bit going into the first turn. He was a little rank. He threw his head up for Kent DeSormo, trying to fight him just a little bit. But Kent quickly got him out into the clear by the time he turned down the backside. And he was actually losing ground when he went to the far turn. You could see yeah. Kent asking him for a little bit more, a little bit more, and Big Brown wasn't responding. He didn't yep. appear to be visibly in distress as far no. as lameness when he yep. went by here. If Kent had sensed that anything was physically wrong, oh. he wouldn't have allowed Big Brown to gallop out from the quarter pole where he eased him all the way to the wire. He would have no gotten off No doubt about that. 
Big Brown was actually a little rank early in the race. For one of the first times that I've seen, he just appeared to be a little out of sorts, Jerry. You can see him right there, Kent DeSormo. Big Brown, throw his head up just a little bit, fighting Kent DeSormo, something he, he normally doesn't do. He's a very relaxed horse. But quickly, Kent moves him out around number seven, tail of Akati, into the clear. And that's about it for that instance. You know, this is obviously going to open up all the discussion about the quarter crack in the left front foot. An Big injury, Brown. an injury that, as was detailed well, could greatly affect performance, not risk life, but greatly affect performance, and we will have to find yeah. out if that was the cause. In a worst-case scenario, Ian, Ian McKinley, Rick Dutrow, just so confident that Big Brown was 100%. You heard, you heard Rick before the race, the foot's not a problem, man, not a problem, babe, not at all. Well, obviously the way Big Brown ran, that might not be the case. Janine Edwards. Ken, tell us what happened. Well, I was in. Take us through the race. Uh, he was keen to go on early. I just wanted to assume he, he slipped again. He breaks so hard. You know, it's hot as hell out there. and The racetrack didn't hold him up. He slipped up front and this time stumbled a little bit. So they just tried to slide to the outside and get a it nice looked, position. It looked like he was fighting you a little bit early in the race. Yeah, he was keen, but down, I mean, I got him out early and we just cantered along down the backside. There was a couple times where he, he thought it was time to go and jumped into the bridle. But by the time we... Long before we went into the last turn, I, w I had no horse. Was he trying to get out? No. He was not trying to get out. Did no. you feel anything at all with his left front? No. The Did you feel lame at all? No. No. I could not be fit. This horse is the best horse I've ever ridden, and something's wrong, so I, I took care of him. In your best guess, in all of your experience, all your years of riding, what went wrong today? I have no idea. Thanks, Ken. Very simply put, by Kent DeSormo, I had no horse. This is the test of the champion. A mile and a half in 93 degrees, coming off the issues where he didn't train up the way they would have preferred because of the quarter crack. He simply said, I had no horse. And it was visible going into the far turn between the half mile pole and the 5-8 pole that, that Kent wa was asking Big Brown. He had no horse, and he did the right thing. I would have done the same thing. Let's look at the break. Big Brown in, in post number one, it didn't appear, Kent said he stumbled. It didn't appear like he stumbled in the front. His back legs could have slipped out from, from, from underneath him slightly. This man of war lost his only race to a horse named Upset, and my great-grandfather, Thomas Gibbs, was the blacksmith to Upset. So racing has been a part of New York's culture, and we are, I have witnessed another incredible and spectacular performance today. Many people came here today to see a Triple Crown winner, but Dotaro had other plans. Uh, <laughs> and so on behalf of the state of New York, welcoming uh, the Belmont Stakes as we do every year, I want to present the Belmont Trophy to Robert LaPinta, the owner of Dotaro. Dotaro, the Belmont champion, Robert LaPinta enjoying the trophy here. Robert, you know, a lot of people, I think, believe that your horse had the early speed in this race. When were you convinced it had enough late speed? Well, you know, he's been getting better, you know, his past two or three races. Nick had a lot of confidence in him, and uh, we knew Tisnow could do the distance. And before the race, he said, I'm doing this for Warpass. So we knew we were going to do it. So Warpass, the horse that you thought perhaps would be a triple crown contender exactly. before this started, but exactly. you stopped a triple crown bid. What's it like to, uh, to stop the triple crown attempt? Well, my condolences go out to the connections of Big Brown. Obviously, there are a lot of disappointed people. But that's what makes this game so great. And, uh, you know, we're just elated, delighted. Uh, there aren't enough words to say how we feel right now. Robert LaPenta, congratulations on the victory for Tatara. Janine Edwards is with us, too. Janine. Well, Reese, as you mentioned, four years ago, a Nick, Nick Zito horse spoiled the Smarty Party. Today, it was Datara's turn to be the party crasher. Nick, does it temper the jubilation any when you see the sport is perhaps disappointed that, once again, no Triple Crown winner? Well, probably, Janine. First, I want to thank God, obviously. Thank you. And the governor said it best. You know, uh, his relations put the shoes on, upset to beat Man of War. And that's what this sport's about, too. There's a lot of upsets in this game, and we have to keep trying, keep playing. And I have a tremendous staff, tremendous people that help me every day. And I give them a lot of credit, too, because I couldn't do it alone. But that's the game, and uh, I'm so grateful to be in this position today. And I thank Alan and 
Bob LaPenta and everybody, but that's the way the business is, and I've been on the losing end sometimes, but I'm sure we'll see another Triple Crown, and the champ, obviously, and I'm talking about Big Brown, just wasn't himself today, but that's nothing to do with this great victory, and I appreciate it. Would you have run a horse with a quarter crack in this race? Well, obviously, you have to talk to trainer Dutro. He did a masterful job in the Derby and the Preakness, and I don't know. I'm not around that horse, but uh, we'll leave it like that. But he is the champ, and I salute him. He just wasn't himself. But I know one, one thing. The Tara was himself, and believe me, it's just complicated. That's all I could say. <laughs> well, you told me today that you were going to go to the lead. Why was the aggressive strategy the best approach with this horse? Well, Alan is an aggressive jockey, too, and I thought they'd fit each other perfectly. And like Bob said, Tiz now is such a great horse. He won the Breeders' Cup in New York, you know, uh, I think it was a few years ago, and he won two Breeders' Cups. So I knew he could get the distance because pedigree is important to me, and uh, he's out of a, pi a pirate boundies ma mare. So there was a lot of emotion here with me with this horse all along, and he just wasn't up to Big Brown in Florida, but he is now, obviously. So it was a wonderful, wonderful situation, and the, the horse did it, and Alan did it, and again, what could I say? Congratulations, Nick. Let me get Alan Garcia in here. Alan, you burst on the American racing scene last fall with your Breeders' Cup win. How does this here today compare? Compare, until compare, it's two big races. I think I'm so excited right now. I have too many words to say. But I say thank you to Mr. LaPenta, to Nick Ciro. He do excellent job. He called me yesterday, say I need to talk to you about this horse. And then I want to see why he has to run this horse. He doing so good. And then he gave me instruction yesterday. He has to go to the lead. And then save your horse the best you can and move wherever you have time for that. So big payoffs today. Nick Zito does it again, carves out a huge win here at a Belmont with one of the biggest upsets of all time. But he's familiar with that.